In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my 2021 predictions. Now, looking back on 2020, perhaps as far as the property market is concerned, the biggest surprise was that property prices looked like ending the year up by about 7.5%. Whereas most forecasters, including myself, this time last year, were suggesting prices would go up by a modest amount, two or three percent in my case. So let's have a think about why that has happened, despite all the negative things about 2020. Now, normally one would expect when you have a massive fall in GDP, um, a big rise in unemployment, house prices are going to take a real tumble. And I think the two key factors are A, interest rates coming down, which means that mortgages remain very affordable. And unlike the 2007, 8, 9 financial crisis, mortgages have generally remained pretty well available, with the exception, of course, of high LTV mortgages. And then secondly, and what in my view has been the biggest factor, is the stamp duty change. Now, whenever there's the opportunity to make a big saving in tax, most people will be keen to jump at it if they can. The ability to save up to £15,000 in tax will have been a really big driver for a lot of people who weren't even thinking about moving at the time, but perhaps had been thinking that they would like to move in a year or two's time. So clearly, if people are paying less tax, they can afford to think about paying a bit more for the property. But equally important, the tax is something you have to find up front. So for those people who were struggling to find a big enough deposit, being able to save the tax is as good as actually needing a smaller deposit. So I think that's been the biggest single driver of the house price increase this year. And that's why I expect to see prices continue to rise in the early stages of next year up to say February, after which it's going to be pretty well impossible to actually put an offer on a house and complete by March. Um, and then we'll see prices take a bit of a downturn, but there are going to be plenty of positive factors even after March. So I don't think prices will fall too far. Well, I think one of the biggest positives by the second quarter of the year after which time the stamp duty benefit, of course, disappears, or at least we expect it to disappear, is going to be what I expect the Bank of England to do. Now, the minutes of the December meeting of the Financial Policy Committee made a very strong case for changing the stress tests which the bank initially introduced in 2014. A lot of lenders and a lot of brokers have been telling the bank for quite some time that these stress tests are now actually too onerous. Um, and what's happened in 2020 seems to have finally changed the bank's view because looking at the minutes, it, they make a very strong case for amending the stress tests. And they have said that's going to be looked at at the March meeting. I think the likelihood is that the current stress test, which requires lenders to test affordability, based on a 3% increase in the mortgage rate over and above lenders' revert to rate, which means that for the big lenders, currently affordability is being assessed at 6.6% .6 or thereabouts. That, I think, is quite likely to change. And we may also see the change in the requirement that not more than 15% lending can be at or above four and a half times income. Now, if that happens, that will clearly give lenders scope to increase the maximum loan to a number of people and, and that will allow people who currently can't uh, buy a property even though it might mean their mortgage is going to be less than the rent they're paying to actually uh, get on the housing market um, and it will allow some people to trade up who otherwise might have struggled to do so so i think that will be one positive factor in in the second quarter of the year and beyond So if you're not currently in a position to buy, or perhaps you're taking the view that prices have gone up to such an extent that actually you'd now rather wait a few months um, and perhaps be able to participate from a dip in prices once the current stamp duty upsurge has sort of taken its course, um, 
what should you be doing to make sure that you're in a good position, A, to find the right property and B, to get the right mortgage? Well, in terms of finding the right property, I think there's no substitute for actually spending a few months looking at the types of property in the types of area you're interested in so that you get a really good feel for the market. Now, there's nothing worse than looking at the first property in your search and thinking, I really like this, but actually, I don't know how it compares with alternatives, so I don't know whether to put a bid in. So before you're ready to start buying, research the market well, obviously plenty of opportunity online, but also go and look at a few properties um, in person. And then when you are ready to actually seriously start looking, you'll be in a much better place to know what sort of price to, to bid for any property you're interested in. Then when it comes to getting all the other bits and pieces in place, the two key bits of professional advice you need to sort out in advance are your mortgage broker and your solicitor. When you talk to estate agents, they are going to want to know who, certainly when you put in an offer, if not before, um, what your capability is in terms of being able to actually get a mortgage to buy the property. And they will also need to know at some stage your solicitor. Now, it helps to avoid being bullied by the estate agent in terms of using their recommended solicitor or broker if you've already got somebody in place. And I think bearing in mind that inevitably, because the, the estate agent is acting on behalf of the vendor, there is a potential conflict of interest if you use a professional recommended by them. You do have to be really careful that um, any professional recommended by the estate agent is generally independent. Or alternatively, of course, you talk to and find your own choice prior to that. So decide which mortgage broker you're going to use. Have a conversation with them at least three months before you're ready to buy. Six months before is not too soon. That will allow the broker an opportunity to assess your situation, advise you of what you might need to do in terms of bank account, etc., or anything else in order to improve your chances of getting a mortgage. Um, and likewise, do your research in terms of solicitors. I'm a great believer that both in terms of broker, solicitor and any other professionals such as a surveyor you may need, going by personal recommendation is the best way to find somebody. Um, and that may also throw up people they recommend you don't use as well as people they recommend you do use. Um, but certainly get that organised one in advance and then you're in a strong position once you start looking to actually act quickly.